I'm Walt Heyer. Uh, I started the Sex Change Regret website many years ago because I myself identified as a female transgender woman for eight years. I came to realize that it is impossible to change a man into a woman. And the regrettable outcomes are horrifying. And my website that's been up now for over 10 years attracts many people to me and they reach out to me for help and assistance to detransition. And we have one of those people today who I'm going to interview. Her name is Sydney Wright. And Sydney and I, I've known her now for a little over a year. Absolutely fantastic young lady with a great, great testimony about what happened to her. And what I think is so interesting, Sydney, is I want you to tell everybody how easy it is to go up to a clinic, get hormones, and just go about your way without any psychotherapy, without any discussion. You don't even have to have gender dysphoria, do you? You just can go into a clinic and say, you know, I feel like I want to start on hormones, and they'll just get you going. And what we want the people to understand in this interview today is what the consequences are. And you're not an isolated story. Many, many people I have actually, uh, you know, talked to, written with, uh, written articles about many, many people, and you're just one of them, but you're one of the more interesting ones. We've become good friends over the last year. So, Sydney, kind of tell us what happened. Uh, mine was 30 years ago, and I was an older person. You're a young lady who's speaking out about the same thing happening to you this many years later. Tell us about it. Right. So, when I started to try to think about starting to transition, uh, I looked into it in that you had to have a psychotherapist, somebody that would sign off on a letter for you to be able to get the hormones. Well, when I started to look into it, I called around, I found somebody. Um, it was as easy as taking an hour out of your day, once a week, going and talking to a lady. You didn't have to have any problems, any issues. She was going to write the letter for you no matter what, because most states don't even have the, they have a conversion therapy law to where they can't say anything against it in the first place. And most therapists wouldn't protest it. Um, my therapist, after five weeks, referred me over to a doctor down in Atlanta. And the doctor himself never even opened the letter to see if it was real or true or anything, just gave me the hormones immediately. So it was probably the easiest process to get through I know uh, they made it a little bit more difficult years ago, but now it's as easy as walking into a clinic to get the hormones. Yeah, and tell us now about the outcome. When you went through that, what, what kind of instructions did they give you as far as how to take the hormones? Uh, and did they tell you what to expect? And, and tell us what that outcome, that's really an interesting part of your story. Right, right. That was so interesting to me because I watched so many videos and things before I had started the hormones and I thought that they would give me my first shot when I was into the in the clinic. And I asked, I was like, so when do I start hormones? And they said, well, you can go pick it up from the pharmacy today. And I said, oh, you're not going to give me my first shot. And he said, well, you can drive all the way back to Rome from Atlanta, which is like an hour drive or more. And bring it back here, which he was being very rhetorical and did not. He was being funny, he thought. And he just advised me to watch YouTube videos and to figure it out. He told me that I couldn't kill myself with trying to figure out how to administer a shot. So he prescribed the hormones, told me to go home and watch videos and to figure it out and that I'd be okay. And he would do some blood work every six months and just make sure that I was okay. But that's when everything started going went downhill from there was when I started administering those hormones. Yeah, it really did go downhill for you, Sydney. Tell us how quickly it went downhill and what you actually went through because of you injecting the hormones they gave you so freely. Right. And they gave them at such a high dosage, uh, too high for females. A female's body was never made for that high of a dosage of testosterone. Um, immediately after at my six month checkup, that's when uh, my paperwork started coming back that I was pre diabetic. I'd gained 50 pounds. Um, I was 118 pounds when I started hormones, and I was already up to 160, getting on to 170. I was about to enter into the 200 range uh, before I quit, but it was massive weight gain, nothing to control on that. Your voice 
deepens fairly quick when you're on uh, the testosterone. And that's something that can never change or go back. As well as um, I had huge problems, started to turn into large, large health problems when I was coming off the testosterone. That's when I was hospitalized um, numerous times and trying to regain back into just being a normal female and having my normal hormones and everything in that nature. But it was a very downhill spiral. Now, what were some of the real critical things that happened to you that put you in the hospital? Um, It was very much so of not being able to eat. If I ate, I would throw up or not be able to keep food down. I mean, it would be as bad as, you know, sitting in the bathroom, shaking, not being able to leave the bathroom because you're getting so sick. And I had lost the 50 pounds that I had gained, but I had lost it in a month and a half because of how sick I was. I couldn't eat but like a bowl of mashed potatoes a day because that was the only thing that my stomach could hold down. So, I mean, I lost weight very, very fast. And Wow, so you went through, and this is all because, yeah, -hmm. yeah, so you you ended up just as a result of taking the testosterone that the clinic gave you, yet was all these things put you in the hospital. Now, you were living with your grandfather, as I remember, at the time. Right, right. Well, see, when I had, um, I was living with my grandfather when I uh, was coming off the hormones, and then um, I moved on my own. It was like the first week of living on my own that I started getting sick. So that I would go stay with them from time to time just to be closer to the hospital because it would be too far to make it from my house sometimes. Well, one of the interesting things about your grandfather, and before I ever knew you, your grandfather sent me an email to my website, sexchangeregret.com, and he says, you know, I, I have a granddaughter that's, uh, you know, changing genders, and I wonder if you have a book that you could give me that would help um, me understand what she's going through. And so I suggested that he get the book, Paper Genders. And uh, I sent, he got the book, and I guess he gave you the book, and you weren't particularly too happy about getting that book, am I right, <laughs> when he <laughs> gave it to you? No, not at the time. I was very mad. Um, When you're going through that, you're just like angry if anybody opposes you. So that was kind of like a slap in the face. You were like, he was basically telling me to get off the hormones and that I needed to wake up. But I'm glad I did read the book. I'm glad it did give me some awakening as well, because I did stop the hormones and it was because of him and you too. So you have helped me so much too. And I'm just glad that the sickness and everything is sort of coming to a stop. There's things that I have to live with now that are are permanent and that does cause me to be out and be sick for a little bit and go to the doctor a little bit more frequently. But one of the main causes of what happened after I stopped the hormones was during the time I had the hormones, I was getting those and starting to form blood clots. And I'm just glad that that's over with because they thought I had one in my lung and that was just a whole ordeal, but I know a lot of transgenders now that have gotten off the hormones that have been live plotted for the blood clots that they've had and that they've been so dangerous that, I mean, it's almost taken them out of the game completely. Yeah, see, this is the one thing that people don't talk about, and that's why your testimony is so important. And like I said before, this is not an isolated testimony. Blood clots are one of the things that has caused people who've taken these hormones, and both female transgenders and male transgenders both suffer the blood clotting. And so uh, it's so important for us to let people know this is dangerous. It's not an easy go out there when you start injecting your body with things that weren't intended to be there in the first place. And then the emotional, tell us about the emotional and psychological impact that people don't talk about as well. Well, you're 100% convinced that you're this other gender and you're making everybody play play along with the whole game that you're creating in your head. I mean, it would it, it it's ridiculous that you're making others play along with it when it's not in fact true at all and you're putting yourself in harm's way to even get these hormones and to take the hormones and to cause all the issues that you're causing on your body. It, it okay. should be something that doesn't need to be around anymore just because And if it is, it needs to be much, much, much harder than what it is now. I think there needs to be guidelines, stipulations in place that need to start and prevent and definitely keep it away from children. It's just, it is nothing but harm. 
when you take it. Yeah, so thank it you, does. Sydney. You're absolutely right. And we're so thankful for you coming on and joining with me, my little hero, Sydney, and great friend. You keep speaking out and keep telling your story. It's a powerful one. Thank you again for being on. Appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. Thank you. Bye-bye.